Hi everyone, welcome to today's GCSE Foundation Revision video. In today's video, we're going to look at equivalent fractions, decimals, and percentages. This is a really important topic to know, for instance, that a half is the same as 0.5 and the same as 50%, that a quarter is 0.25 or 25%, and so on. So fractions, decimals, and percentages. I'm going to, in this video, go through some of the key fractions, decimals, and percentages, and then I'm going to talk about how to convert between a fraction, a decimal, and a percentage to each other. And um, in this video, I'll go through those, and I'll give you some questions to try yourself. And remember to pause the video and to try those questions and to make sure you can do them as well. Okay, so let's get started. So in today's video, we're going to look at fractions, decimals, and percentages. So equivalent fractions, decimals, and percentages. So here's part of the Court Maths Revision card, and we've got some of the key equivalent fractions, decimals, and percentages. So for instance, a half is the same as 0.5, and that's the same as 50%, so they're all equivalent to each other. A quarter is equal to 0.25, which is 25%. Three quarters is 0.75, which is 75%. A third, which is equal to 0.333 and so on, and it recurs forever. And then we've got 33.333 and so on percent. Two thirds would be 0.6 recurring, so 0.6666 and so on, or 66.666 and so on percent. A fifth is 0.2 or 20%. Two fifths is 0.4 or 40%. Three fifths is 0.6 or 60%. Our next one, four fifths is 0.8, which is 80%. A tenth is 0.1, which is 10%. Three tenths would be 0.3, which is 30%. Seven tenths is 0.7, which is 70%. Nine tenths is equal to 0.9, which is 90%. And an eighth is half of a quarter, so that's 0.125 or 12.5%, and so on. So these are some of the key fractions, decimals, and percentages that I recommend that students studying for their GCSE maths. So you know the 0.25 is a quarter straight away. So it's important that you learn these. So what I recommend is you write them in your notebook, or if you've got window pens, you write them on your windows at home. So if you're daydreaming and look out the window, you see these fractions, decimals, and percentages, or even get a friend or a member of your family to quiz you on them. So they're just very useful to know. And if you've got the revision card, this is on one of the revision cards for you. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm now gonna show you how you convert between fractions and decimals and percentages and so on. So so let's have a look at the first one. So the first one is to write 0.7 as a percentage. So to change a decimal into a percentage, we multiply the decimal number by 100 and then put a percentage sign on it. So for instance, if we've got 0.7, if we multiply this by 10, we get 7. And if we multiply by 10 again, we get 70. So that means a 0.7 is 70%. So to change a decimal into a percentage, you just multiply the decimal number by 100 and then put your percentage sign there. Okay, our next one is to change a decimal into a fraction. So whenever I'm changing decimals into fractions, I actually read just what it is. It's 0.7, so that's 7 tenths, because that 7 is in the tenths column. So it's 7 tenths, so we just write that down, 7 tenths. And if that cancels down, you cancel it down, but 7 tenths, that can't be cancelled down, so 0.7 is just 7 tenths. So to change a decimal into a percentage, you just multiply the decimal number by 100, and then put your percentage sign on the end. If you've got a decimal number such as 0.7, that's 7 tenths, so you write 7 over 10. If, for instance, we had something different, such as 0.14, so to change this into a percentage, you'd multiply by 100, so it'd be 14, so it'd be 14 percent and then to write 0.14 as a fraction we have a look at it and we see that the ones in the tenths column and the fours in the hundredths column so we've got 14 hundredths so we write that down as 14 hundredths so 0.14 as a fraction would be 14 hundredths this can be cancelled down because they're both divisible by two so dividing both of these by two would be seven over 50. so that means that 0.14 is seven fiftieths and that's it. So to change a decimal into a percentage, we multiply by 100 and then put the percentage sign on the end. And to change a decimal into a fraction, we have a look and see what it is in terms of 0.7, that's 7 tenths, you write it down. If you've 0.14, that's 14 hundredths, and you write that down and cancel it down if you can. Okay, here's one for you to try yourself now. So can you please write 0.65 as a percentage, and can you write 0.65 as a fraction? So pause the video and give that a shot now. Okay, so to write 0.65 versus percentage, we multiply by 100, so that'll be 65, so it's 65%, so 0.65 is 65%. And then to write 0.65 as a fraction, well, it's 65 hundredths, so we write that down, 65 hundredths. Now, 65 and 100 are both divisible by 5, so we're going to divide both of these numbers by 5. So we're going to take our 65 and divide it by 5. So how many 5s go into 6? That's 1, remainder 1. And how many 5s go into 15? That's 3. So it's going to be 13 on the top, 
and or the numerator and then in terms of the denominator we've got 100 divided by 5 so how many 5s go into 1 0 remainder 1 how many 5s go into 10 2 and how many 5s go into 0 0 so that's 20 so if we divide both of these numbers by 5 we get that's equal to 13 twentieths so that means that 0 0.65 is 13 twentieths and that's it so if you got that correct well done okay let's have a look at our next one so the next one we're going to write percentages as decimals and percentages as fractions so to change a percentage to a decimal remember to change a decimal to a percentage we multiply by 100 so to change a percentage to a decimal we're going to take away the percentage sign and then just divide by 100 so if we had 68 percent well we're going to divide 68 by 100 so that'll be moving the digits two columns to the right would be 0.68 so 68 percent as a decimal would be 0.68 Okay, next, if we were to write 68% as a fraction, well, because it's percent, that means out of 100. So 68%, I'm just going to write 68 out of 100, just as a fraction like that, because if it's a percent, it's out of 100, so it means 68 out of 100. And now we can just cancel it down. So these numbers are both divisible by 2, so dividing both of them by 2 would give us 34 fiftieths. And we can divide by 2 again, that'll be 17 25ths. So 68% as a fraction would be 17 25ths, and that's it. So to change a percentage to a decimal, you get rid of the percentage sign and you just divide by 100. And to write a percentage as a fraction, you just put over 100 and cancel it down. Okay, let's have a look at one now for you to try yourself. So can you write 3% as a decimal and can you write 3% as a fraction? Okay, so to write 3% as a decimal, we get rid of the percentage sign, so we've got 3, and then we're going to divide it by 100. So dividing by 10 would be 0.3, and dividing by 10 again would be 0.03. So 3% as a decimal would be 0.03. So if you got that, well done. And to write 3% as a fraction, well, remember, percent means out of 100, so just be 3 out of 100, or 3 hundredths, like so. And that's it. Okay, so we've looked at how to write decimals as percentages and decimals as fractions. And we've also looked at how to write percentages as decimals and percentages as fractions. Now let's look at writing fractions as decimals and fractions as percentages. So the first one is to write three-fifths as a decimal. So to write three-fifths as a decimal, what I like to do is remember that the line in the fraction means divided by. So we've got three divided by five. So I'm going to do three divided by five, and then that will tell me what three-fifths is as a decimal. So I'm going to use my bus shelter method. So I'm going to do three divided by five. So put what I'm dividing under the bus shelter and what I'm dividing by in front of it. Now it's a decimal number, so I'm going to put a decimal point and a couple of zeros. Now I may need more zeros depending on the numbers, but here I've just put two to begin with. And I'm going to put a decimal point there. So how many fives go into three? Zero, remainder three. How many fives go into 30? Six. And that's it. So 0 0.6. So three fifths as a decimal is 0 0.6. Now that was actually one of the ones, one of the key ones that I recommended that you learn because a fifth is 0 0.2. So three fifths would be 0 0.6. So that's just something that I would say, you know, trying to learn that off by heart. Okay. Now to write three fifths as a percentage, well, you could actually look at your decimal. So you could change this into a decimal using what we've just done. And that would be 0 0.6. And then to change from a decimal to a percentage, you just multiply this by 100. So multiplying this by 100 would be, well, six and then 60. So that means it'd be six. 60%, just taking the decimal number and then multiplying by 100. So to change a fraction to a percentage, you can change it to a decimal first of all, and then just change it to a percentage. That might be quite useful. So that's one way to do it. Now there is another way to do it, and the other way to do it can be quite useful in some situations. So for instance, if we've got three fifths, I might want to find an equivalent fraction with 100 on the denominator. If I can find an equivalent fraction with 100 on the denominator, it'd be something out of 100. So it'd be whatever this is, percent. So three fifths, well, we can multiply the denominator by 20 because 5 times 20 is 100. So if we multiply the numerator by 20, well, 3 times 20 would be equal to 60. So 60 out of 100, which would be 60%. Now, that was quite a nice one to do. For instance, if we had something like 4 sevenths, and I was to change that into a percentage, I would, to go from 7 to 100, it would be quite difficult. So what I would actually do in this question is just do 4 divided by 7, either using the bush shelter method or my calculator, preferably, and then multiply that by 100, and then put the percentage sign on the end, and that would be the percentage. So to change a fraction to a decimal, we just did the numerator divided by the denominator and to change a fraction into percentage you could change it into decimal first of all and then turn that into a percentage which is quite straightforward or you can try and find an equivalent fraction with 100 on the denominator and then that'd be whatever is on the numerator percent okay let's have a look at some for you to do now yourself so we've got right 7 20ths as a decimal and we've got right 7 20ths as a percentage so can you have a look at both of these questions now so pause the video and try these ones Okay, so to write 7 twentieths as a decimal, we're going to do 7 divided by 20. We're going to divide what's on the numerator by what's on the denominator. Now, we know it's a decimal number, so we're going to put a point and some zeros. 
Okay, I'm going to put two to begin with, and I put decimal point up there. So how many 20s go into seven? Zero, remainder seven. How many 20s go into 70? So 20, 40, 60, that's three, remainder, that's 60, so that'll be remainder 10. And how many 20s go into 100? That'll be five. So that's 0 0.35. So 7 20ths as a decimal is 0 0.35. And then to write 7 twentieths as a percentage, we could look at this and say, well, if it's 0 0.35 as a decimal, that's going to be 35%. Alternatively, what you could do is in this one, because the denominator is quite nice, it is 20, we can get an equivalent fraction with 100 on the denominator quite nicely. If you multiply the denominators by 5, multiplying 20 by 5, you get 100. So we'd multiply the numerator by 5, and 7 times 5 is 35. So it'd be 35 percent. 35 out of 100 is 35 percent. Okay, so we've looked at how to convert between fractions to decimals, fractions to percentages, decimals to fractions, decimals to percentages, percentages to fractions, and percentages to decimals. Okay, here's a question now for you to do yourself. So pause the video and try this one. Okay, so this one's quite nice. We've got a half, so it's going to be 0 0.5 and 15%. So that's quite useful to learn off by heart. Okay, this row, we've got 0 0.25 or 25%. That's a quarter, so that's going to be a quarter. A fifth, again, that's another one to learn off by heart, was 20% or 0 0.2. And finally, we've got 0 0.17. So we multiply this by 100 and put the percentage sign on the end, so that'll be 17%. And as a fraction, well, it's going to be it's 17 hundredths. So we're going to write 17 over 100. So 17 hundredths, like so, and that can't be cancelled down. Or we could look at the percentage, which is 17%, so it's 17 out of 100, and that's it. So in this video, we've looked at equivalent fractions, decimals, and percentages. Now, I would highly recommend that you go into Corp Maths and you try the practice questions on this topic, because it'll include questions on, perhaps, ordering fractions, decimals, and percentages, and it'll include some questions, perhaps, where they're wordy questions as well. So I'd highly recommend you have a look at that. And that's it. So I hope you found that video useful. Remember also, if you've got the revision cards, card number 58 is the key fractions, decimals, and percentages. And that's an important one to learn. So, you know, you know, on the bus into school or on the car journey into school, you know, look at this revision card, learn it, get people to quiz you on it, make sure you're really confident with equivalent fractions, decimals, and percentages. Not only is it useful in topics such as, you know, fractions, decimals, and percentages, but also whenever you're doing any questions such as speed, distance, and time, if a car travels for four hours and 15 minutes, the fact that 15 minutes is a quarter of an hour, so that'd be four and a quarter hours, and how to write that as 4.25 and so on. So fractions, decimal percentages are useful for their own questions, but also in other topics as well. And that's it. So I hope you found this video useful. There's 91 days to go into your GCSE maths exam, so keep up the hard work. You're doing fantastically well. Remember to be doing your five a days. And remember also, whenever you're in school, to be looking out for any revision sessions or extra sessions that your teacher might be putting on, just to make sure you're availing of those and taking all any opportunities that are available for you. But keep up the hard work. Well done. Cheers. Bye.